starting with emotional variation, this is a really beautiful moving book. It has excellent emotional variation. It has ups and downs, happiness and sadness, and the best comparisons between David's life and Lulu's life. It shows how they're able to react completely differently to chaotic events just ruining them in their life. And they're both different uh, perspectives on meaninglessness. They experience different worlds of life, basically. Lulu faces it with terror and tries to run, can't find meaning sometimes. Whereas, obviously, David is just walking through these problems like they don't exist because he's trying to create meaning through superiority. Both of them are unhealthy and have their issues, and that's the point of the novel. Lulu especially has an amazing encounter for her own emotional emotions during her life, but that's because she's writing the book, so obviously she gets a better perspective. Now onto ideas, topics, and themes of why fish don't exist. The central theme is the idea that chaos is unstoppable. There are so many things in life that's outside of your control, that's just up to luck, and you can't really stop that ever from just happening. However, it uses, again, Lulu's perspective and David's perspective on life to kind of you know, really dig in the point that chaos, even though it is unstoppable, you have your own choices to make to kind of deal with it. Lulu's always been a fr emotionally more frailer person and wants to find ways to kind of circumvent with or find or find a way to kind of avoid the terror of existentialism. Whereas David, on the other hand, tries to brute force his way through it, right? Bad luck happens, earthquake destroys everything, a lightning strike destroys everything. Jane Stanford isn't being nice to me, even though she invited us, me to start this uh, university. He just removes problems as fast as he possibly can, bounces back with more perseverance and goes on. Now, while both of these perspectives have their own good and bad points, what Lulu tries to push is the idea that all perspectives are fine and that as long as they're kept to a healthy, balanced level. You can't always be terrified of the future or terrified of existentialism, but you can't also remove problems pragmatically forever because eventually someone will punish you for your mistakes. For David, his terrifying acts and, for example, later in life, pushing eugenics to the brink because he wants order in um, human races as well, just led, which is a big irony because we all know now that eugenics doesn't make any sense. His massive mission to categorize fish into everything to kind of show superiority in humanity didn't work either because fish don't exist. So again, I think that both of them work really, really well. Lulu and the later parts of her book talks about how she overcame her uh, terror, but didn't really become like David either. She doesn't just walk through problems. She tries to reach out and help others as well. I think it's an excellent way. Deluding yourself with confidence like David just leads to dark intentions and that Lulu's says that basically diversity for the sake of diversity doesn't matter. Diversity for the sake of defeating chaos doesn't matter either because chaos is unstoppable. Instead, it just makes sense to play the best you really can and just remain happy. Written quality wise, why fish don't exist also really excels because it has, first of all, it's a very playful and light tone for most of the book. Even though the things it talks about are magical or shocking, it, it isn't always really that like stunning. It, it's very grounded in reality and doesn't make things more like difficult or more happy than it needs to be. I use the word playful as in like, it doesn't try to ground you into like the depth of it in the moment and instead just talks about the facts very lightly. However, it actually still has an incredibly deep message, which is why its um, pacing is also excellent. It is never too slow or too fast. When reading, I never felt like bored because it was like the plot just dragged on and on and on about things I don't care about. It didn't feel too fast either. It didn't feel like it rushed um, David's story or Lulu's story. It paced it very well. And there are some sections where it slowed it down purposely to increase tension, but it works very, very well. The English is obviously uh, flawless. There's not much to say. It's just great. In terms of flaws, I think that why don't uh, why fish don't exist is might maybe a little too overt in its message because although it, I said again it touches on everything pretty well in the end it, in the last few chapters it really tries to squeeze the entire message and morality of the book into it and kind of pits the two characters together too too much. I think that if we were to leave the um, readers with more of a sense of self discovery in the way um, why fish don't exist and what that message really means. Might be better than trying to state it out loud, but that's just my opinion. I think it works really well anyway. It's an excellent book. In conclusion, Why Fish Don't Exist is just an excellent novel all around. It has an incredibly great message. It disguises it in a very light, uh, lighthearted tone, but it still has the guts to talk about darker things like attempted suicide and possibly murder, right? It has it covers all of the evidence incredibly well. It's very steeped in reality, and I just like it all around.